Hello and welcome to Mastering Statistics Volume 1. In this course, in this set of lessons, we're going to begin a journey to really help you understand and be very proficient with the concepts of statistics. Now, to a lot of uh, people, a lot of students, most students, statistics seems very hard and very difficult. But what we're going to do is we're going to start at the very, very beginning and assume that you know absolutely nothing about statistics and build your knowledge up step by step through each and every concept. And so before you know it, you'll be doing you know the hard things or the difficult, challenging assignments uh, with ease. And we're going to do all of that stuff primarily by working a lot of example problems because statistics, you know, uh, more than a lot of other classes, really, really is dependent on you being able to work problems. You learn the concepts by working the problems. In fact, I could probably list most of the properties and principles of statistics in a few minutes on the board. I could probably list them all, uh, and it would be a few formulas, you know, and, but really it comes down to you reading the problem and understanding what it's telling you to do, and you really only get that by working problems. So that's what we're going to do. I like to open this, uh, this batch of lessons up with this lesson here, and, it, and although I do have some notes on my paper, I'm not going to write anything down on the board for this very first lesson. We're not going to be doing any math, but what I'm going to do is introduce the concepts of statistics because I want to make sure you understand that you already have a pretty good idea of what this course is going to be about. It's just that you may not know it. And so the first thing I want to say, and open with kind of uh, something in jest, and that is something I've always been fond of saying, and that is, did you know that 65% of all statistics are made up? Did you know that? 65% of all statistics are made up. It's a joke, you know, that's not really serious. But what it really is trying to tell you is, is kind of statistics has a sort of a bad rap in a way. You can kind of make any statistical analysis uh, you can you can present information in a way that's beneficial to you is what I guess I'm trying to say. A lot of the polls that you see on TV, you know, they might tell you 35% of somebody is doing this and 75% agree with doing that. You got to be careful when you just listen to to conclusions drawn because everything depends on how was that data collected, who did they ask, right? How did they phrase the question, and how were the, the uh, data collected and analyzed because I can take almost any batch of data that may not be terribly favorable and I can massage it to make it look you know maybe like like it is favorable or at least kind of influence you into thinking the way I think so statistics is by and large the process of collecting information collecting data most of the time it's numbers of some kind and presenting that in, in lots of different ways and drawing conclusions from that data. So even though we're taking this class and a lot of students think it's difficult, you really already have some concept of what statistics really is, even if you don't know it. For instance, what if I uh, go to a classroom, any college classroom or high school classroom, maybe there's 50 people in that room, something like that, and I go and line everybody up against the wall and I measure everyone's height. Right? I measure everyone's height. Some people are a little bit shorter, some people are a little bit taller, but I measure all the people's height in that room. Maybe there's like 30 people, it doesn't really matter. And I get, when I calculate it, that there's the average height of everybody in that room is five feet, seven inches tall. Why do I pick five feet, seven inches? That's how tall I am, so let's just go with that, right? But let's just say we take a, a sample, we sample everyone in our classroom, and we measure everyone's height, and then we take the average, right? The mathematical average. We get five feet, seven inches um, tall. My question to you is, okay, that's great information about who's in that classroom, but can we draw any more broad conclusions from that? Can we, can we extrapolate and go figure out, hey, is five feet seven inches the average height of everybody in the United States of America? Is five feet seven inches, you know, I live in Texas, is that the average height of everybody in Texas? Maybe it's a regional thing. Five feet seven inches because I've taken this small little sample, is that representative of everyone in the whole world? Well, of course not. We don't think that that's true. You know, you gotta be careful about how you, you take data and what conclusions you draw from it. It would be completely ludicrous to take 30 people out of a random school in Texas, let's say, and measure their height and then go and say, draw conclusions from that and say that people in Idaho and Maine and Australia and France and Germany all have a similar distribution and so they all have an average height of five feet seven inches if we took a worldwide population measurement. We don't say that that's true. But clearly, there has to be some point 
some, we all know it's absurd to look at 30 people and draw a conclusion of worldwide heights, right? But there should be some sample size, like maybe, what if I measure a thousand people? Well, that's getting, that's getting pretty close. I mean, it's getting a little bit better, but still, there are regional variations around the world. I mean, there's different average heights for people in Asia uh, versus Europe versus Australia versus America. So if we take our thousand you know, person uh, uh, sample from, let's say, the middle of the United States, that may work pretty good for over there, but it may not say anything about German height because, you know, genes are different in different parts of the world. But what if we looked at a million people? Now we're starting to get into very large um, sample sizes. If we wanted to look at a million people and look at their heights and calculate their average heights, would that be representative of like a worldwide average height? Well, that's getting to be a pretty significant sample, but still we shouldn't select a million people from the United States, that would be silly. We should look at people from pockets all over the world, maybe in their proper percentages, you know, based on population. What if we looked at a billion people? Well, you know, the world has about six and a half or seven billion people. So if we actually look at a billion people for our sample, we're getting very, very close to truth. If we measure everybody in the world, of course we have the answer. If we measure one billion people, we're getting pretty close to the answer. But clearly going into a high school classroom and looking at that, at that, uh, at that distribution of heights is, is a silly uh, way to extrapolate to a worldwide thing. What I guess I'm trying to tell you here is that what we're doing when we do statistics a lot of times is we're measuring something. In this case, it's the height of people. And that information is great. We understand what that pocket of data is, but we usually want to be able to extrapolate. That means we want to go figure out what is truth, what is reality beyond our little sample. How can we draw conclusions about a bigger sample population than what we you know, started with in our measurement? And so that's an example I wanted to bring up to you. Another good example would be something that we see all the time around election year. You know, when the president or the vice president, they're campaigning for the next big election. Let's say we have a telephone survey. You know, we get on the phone, we call 250 people. That's a large number of people, right? It may take a few hours or a few days to do that. 250 people I call and I ask them, hey, who are you going to vote for president? And I get all of their answers. And let's say that of that data that comes back, uh, I've collected that 60%, so over half of the people, plan to vote Republican, let's say, in the next uh, or election. Um, and so is that a useful piece of information to know? I mean, does that mean that I can conclude that 60% of the United States population is gonna vote for that candidate? Well, of course not, that would be silly. Number one, 250 people, it's just not very many people compared to how many people we have in the United States, 300 million people, right? Uh, so that is just an incredibly small sample size. And number two, you have to be careful who you ask. When I collected this telephone survey, did I call everybody that lived in a certain city? Well, maybe that city it has a different you know, economic environment. Maybe they're happy with, with certain uh, political decisions. Maybe they're very happy with voting for that person. But if I ask 250 people in a different city with different economic conditions and different challenges, they may not like what's going on and they may not vote for that. So I, I need to be careful when I ask people things like, who do you plan to vote for? You need to not only ask enough people to get a statistical significance, right? That's what that's, that's what that's called, is when you feel like you've collected enough information so that you can draw conclusions, right? Um, but you also need to make sure that you are asking a broad cross-section of people. We need to ask people from, you know, in, from Florida and Texas and Ohio, and I know I'm using United States examples, but wherever you live in the world, it's the same thing. You need to make sure that you're collecting that information from all over the place so that you're not, you know, you're not doing silly things like what if I call, what if I only call people over 60 years old? See, I, I say I, I did a survey of 250 people. What if I was, you know, really not very smart about it and I, I call uh, everybody over, you know, 60 years old. There's nothing wrong with call, with people over 60 years old, but the problem is if you collect all your data from older people, they're all, they could be skewed a certain direction because when you get to a certain age, you're worried about certain things. And so they might, 
be thinking a certain way and voting a certain way. It would be give you a different result than if you asked a broad cross-section of ages, which is what you should do. So that's what I was saying when I opened up that 65% of all statistics are made up. It's a little joke, right? But what it means is I can kind of massage things however I want. If I take a phone survey of 250 people, but I don't really tell you that those people were all over 65 years old, then I can skew my results without really lying to you, but I can skew the data and mislead you without you really knowing it, knowing it. So statistics is, by and large, uh, the process of collecting information. Usually it's numerical data. We'll find out as we do more problems, right? And we're happy to have that information from a small sample of data, but we're much more interested in using that information to make broad conclusions uh, about a larger set of data because it's impractical to ask everybody in the world a question or it's impractical to ask everybody in a certain part of the United States a question. So what we want to do is we want to ask a small sample and then we want to go from there and extrapolate. And so this course is going to be all about learning about collecting data, learning about what makes sense when we ask those questions and how do we calculate things about that data to draw those conclusions. That's basically what statistics is. So follow me on this journey into the next section and the sections beyond and you'll find out that you know uh, statistics gets kind of a bad rap but it's really not that difficult uh, when you roll your sleeves up and get down to the brass tacks of it. So I'm Jason, follow me on to the next section. We'll get our sleeves rolled up a little bit and work some actual problems. And I promise you that we'll take it step by step so that every concept will be bulletproof and you'll build your skills in the topic of statistics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.